On the same side of the same issue, Mr. Jim Jaworski in the five-minute slot. Jim? Go ahead. Okay. For uh, light rail transit ad ad activists like myself, a question must be asked for forthwith. Is it time to dance in the streets of Winnipeg yet? I say, not quite yet. A few things must happen before we can. Firstly, the main problem with getting light rail transit off the ground here has always come down to that agreement signed by former MP Lloyd Axworthy, signed December 8, 1983. His so-called deal pre precluded any other mode except diesel buses for use in the Southwest, Southwest Transit Corridor. I've concluded that a person could talk to the politicians until blue in the face on the benefits of rail transit, but until the Liberals do something about their busway or no way attitude, nothing will help to resolve this issue. In order to fix this problem then, the Liberal Party of Canada and possibly the provincial branch must revise its policies to include rail-based transit for Winnipeg. The idea was that new flyer being based in Manitoba could benefit, could, sorry, could build fancier diesel buses or electric trolley buses because they would be eligible for federal funds from their Western Diversification Fund. The problem with buses, though, is that they aren't very comfortable for its passengers, mainly when accelerating and decelerating cannot easily position itself reliably cl close to the curb, will last only 12 to 20 years, and cost three times as much in labor cost to haul 150 passengers. The two largest rail tr transit manufacturers, namely Bombardier and Siemens, can build an LRT vehicle that lasts for 40 years and costs one and a half million dollars. A diesel bus for the Southwest Transit Corridor was recently estimated to cost one and a quarter million dollars. The important thing to understand is that if Winnipeg goes with light rail for its rapid transit system, New Flyer will not be in a disadvantage. They will remain the leading bus manufacturer in North America. Nothing is going to change that soon. And they can still manufacture regular diesel buses for use on feeder bus routes to rapid transit stations and for other cities' urban transit fleets. New Flyer won't go out of business when Winnipeg chooses light rail transit. Rail transit can attract more riders than BRT ever will. Other rail transit systems have proven that more than 50% of new riders in the short term are auto capable but choose to leave their autos at home. In the longer term, rail-based transit can double the system-wide total passengers. Imagine Winnipeg Transit reporting 90 million passengers in 10 years from now rather than the 38 million they do now. And, and in our winter climate, only a rail-based vehicle can pass through blizzard conditions. A rubber-tired bus will get stuck in a blizzard, relegating it to no better operating conditions than the private auto. And staying on that topic of winter, diesel buses need heated indoor storage, or else their engines won't start. In comparison, a rail vehicle can stay outdoors because its propulsion is based on electricity, thereby making it cheaper to store. Secondly, Mayor Sam Cates' Rapid Transit Task Force must be very careful to whom it tenders its consulting work. The consulting company who wrote the cost-benefit analysis released this year on the Southwest Corridor was selected by Winnipeg Transit Administration. That is Pro Busway Consulting Company McCormick Rankin of Ottawa, Ontario, who also had some something to do with the Ottawa Transit Way. Uh, Winnipeg Transit must not be allowed to be directly involved in this part of the process, else its inherent lack of objectivity will see busways recommended again. The same company had also been given the consulting job for the downtown connector service and whose still unreleased recommendations were weak in reviewing streetcar, tram, and tarted up buses as options. Mayor Cates, please, please, please be careful out there when choosing consultants regarding rapid transit. You're on the right track here. Um, consultants get paid too much to begin with. 
and it'd be too bad if they came out with weak recommendations or the process, sorry, or, or the persons writing the report had some strange connections to McCormick Rankin or their like. Thirdly, Calgary Sea Train recently upgraded to uh, its system to use wind power to generate electricity to run its light rail vehicles. I hope that Winnipeg's light rail line can be operated using renewable wind energy too. In 2002, the Victoria Transport Institute did a study saying, okay, I'm almost finished here. Uh, in 2002, the Victoria Transport Policy Institute did a study saying that an 18 kilometer light rail transit line would cost 350 million to install and 12 million per year to operate would attract 15,000 daily trips and grow to 30,000 trips within 10 years. That's the power of light rail transit to enhance an urban area's travel options. And our uh, southwest corridor is uh, smaller than that. It's, it's about 12 kilometers, so we may even be able to do it cheap, even uh, for a lower price than 350 million. Th thank you. Okay. Okay, one more paragraph. Thank you so much, City Council, for holding to the idea that BRT won't work and keeping the flame alive for light rail transit in Winnipeg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have two listed delegations in opposition to the same clause. Uh, 